Hey everybody, Pastor Jason and Pastor Andy here with you on this Take, take Ground, ground Tuesday. Tuesday. The day is the day Hallelujah. to take ground. Come on. Listen, I know you feel like you have lost and lost and lost and mm. lost, but this is the year of expand. Come on. Come this on. is the year where you get it back yes, and you sir. get it back with interest. Yes, this sir. is the year that you enlarge Hallelujah. the area of your tent. We're not looking for ways to shrink down. We're looking for ways to get bigger. Yes. Matter of fact, my 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 parents, uh, my parents just bought a house and uh, I, we went and helped them. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we went and helped them set the set everything up in the house. And my dad said, well, said, Jay, at this stage in most people's lives, they're trying to find a smaller house for whatever reason. <laughs> we just bought the biggest house we've uh, ever bought. The blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the okay. Lord. And I'm telling you, Pastor Andy, Woo. what it is. This is the year of expand. Yes. This yes. is not the year to think small. Mm, this is on. not the year to think about downsizing. Come on. Come on. This is the year to think about how big. Come on. Is God. Yes. And yes. how big is my promise? We, we just had a couple tell us uh, this year that they're, they're a ministering couple. Mm -hmm. Five gifts bought them a house. Yes. Five gifts. Yes. Five gifts. Haven't had a house for 22 years. Mm -hmm. Five gifts this year mm -hmm. were given and bought them a house. Just like that. And, it's not God's good. And here's the funny God's thing. God's good. So, so, I'm telling every limit song. <laughs> no, we're about to we're about to, uh, <laughs> to go ahead and bump your religious cup of coffee right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. This couple tells us this testimony. Yes. And then says, so yeah, we're believing God for another Come house. Come on. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. I love it. For a second. I haven't had a house in 22 years. I love it. Five gifts buy them a house. I'm telling you. Now they're looking and say, look at God go. Yeah. So let me look for a second house now. No limits on him. No limits Absolutely on him. Absolutely not. And, and here's the thing. I know I know you've been sitting, sitting here thinking, you know what? I'm just going to be content with my tired little cabin in the corner. And but I'm telling you that there is a God uh, that is mm. has called for you to expand. Let me tell you one of the great ways to expand. 10 a.m. Come on. 6 p.m. today. On. This is Push Tuesday. Yes, sir, it is. These prayer meetings that we're going to this week are all important. They're always all important. But these are going to be powerfully focused because Easter, Easter is coming yeah. this Sunday. The day where more people who are lost will show up to the church uh, than any other day. Come on. Come it's, on. It is statistically proven. That's it. More people are going to show up today than any other day. And this or this week, sorry. And and so I'm believing for you. Mm. I'm believing for you that that includes your lost come family on. members, yes, your lost coworkers, yeah, your lost died. friends, the people you have been inviting and inviting Hallelujah. and they have given you excuse after excuse and never come. This is the one where they're going to come. They're not just going to be saved. They're going to be made yes. disciples. And yes. I'll tell you why. Because tonight we'll be praying for that. Come on. Come not on. for conversions, but for disciples. Come on. Come on. And so we're believing for it. 10 a.m., 6 p.m. at both the Forsyth campus yes. and the Locust Grove yes. campus. Come on out. If you have to be late, be late. Be late. We had a we had a man of God yes. show up at the end of prayer meeting mm -hmm. last Tuesday night. Yeah, near, at the end near, of prayer meeting last Tuesday night. Literally walks into prayer meeting as our pastor is praying the final blessing over mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. That man received such a deliverance. Yes. After prayer meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Such a deliverance that literally this morning I've been on the phone with Come him on. On. constantly as he's talking about the new things that the yeah. Lord's opening up God's for him. So good. He's that good. God's so I'm so telling good. you, I'm telling you, come to prayer, come to yes. prayer, yes. come to yes. prayer. Come to, and if you've never come to a prayer meeting before, get to this one. I'm telling you. Get to this one. And there's a grace on this house. Yes. There is a grace on this yes, house. Yes, I agree. Right now, there's a grace on mm -hmm. this house. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, there's such a grace on this house that I know that the enemy has told you that someone can't be saved, mm -hmm. won't be saved, will never come to church. Can I tell you this year, I've seen people mm -hmm. come to church that I haven't seen come to church in 20-something years that yes. we have invited. Yes. Can I tell you that they came to church? Mm -hmm. Do you know why there is a divine grace on yes, this house right is. now? There is a divine grace for people to come and experience God. Mm -hmm. It is a it is a God thing right mm -hmm. now. 
that when people are invited to this house, they come here, yep. they're touched by God, they're changed by God. Mm -hmm. By golly, they're reborn again, yes, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you need to invite, invite everybody. Somebody. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. how many people this year, honestly, I know, I know it's in the double digits, mm -hmm. that have been invited to this house just at a store. Mm. Yeah. Doesn't even, don't know the people, mm -hmm. nothing. Just such and such. I I just met them at the store. We're sent, we're standing in the same line mm -hmm. to pay for groceries. They invited me to church. I decided to come. Mm. I mean, it's it's just person after person yes. after person after person. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you, there is a grace. There is. I, even we have, even have a, a man that has come become part of our church in the last two months, I guess mm -hmm. it is, who uh who actually found us through this medium. Yeah. Uh, and 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 literally had was watching church, watching so many churches mm -hmm. online, and saying, "God, I wish there was a church like this in in my vicinity." So he's watching all these other churches. Facebook delivers to him Come on. a a service from our church. Yeah. He goes in, he checks it out, he he looks at it and says, "Man, what a place. I wish this place was close to my house. Looks and finds out it's 10 miles from his house <laughs> and has become a part of this place. Come on. Has become saved. I'm telling you. Baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Not on a Sunday, by the Come way. Come on. Come on. On a Friday morning mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock, balls through here. Come on. And gets baptized Blessed in the Holy the Ghost the in an office. <laughs> <laughs> and has become oh. probably the foremost evangelist in this I'm church because he is inviting person glory after person after God. person and they are coming they're coming with him glory be to god there's a grace there is a grace i'm telling you there is a grace and, I, and and there's a solid reason we took seven minutes to explain all this to you guys <laughs> it's because you needed to hear it. come on your faith needed to be increased yes. today yes you needed to understand that this is the time yes it is I, it, if it's i right now if i didn't believe it i wouldn't be taking the time to emphasize this Come on. I wouldn't be doing it. We have so much to say. Come on. But I need you to understand yes. this is the time yes. to invite people. Yes, it is. And so we obviously we have a host of ways to do that. And so come and see us. We're gonna be able to, we're gonna be able to put something in your hand that you can put something in their hand. Mm. But the most important thing you can do is get yourself come come here on. today. I'm telling, you. I'm telling you. And intercede for them. Remember. It's not what we do in the physical that's important. Yes. It's what we do in the spirit. Now we can get the script. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> We're so glad you're here with us this morning. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Bless so, the Lord. Pastor Jason, we was talking about being born again. Yes. And as, as we was ending yesterday, um, literally as I was praying, I had to I had to just hold back because I knew. Mm -hmm. I knew we was about to go into Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And and so what I wanted to go over is Nicodemus must be born again. Yes. So you know what? Let's just let's just read. Okay. Let's just read. You got your Bibles. John chapter three. You ready? Ready. So there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi means teacher. We know that you are a teacher come from God. Mm -hmm. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with them. What's very interesting, by the way, is this is the same group, by the way, that will accuse Jesus of doing miracles by the spirit of That's the devil. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Turns around and says, you cast out demons by, by another demon. <laughs> there we go. Funny aside there. Uh, Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless... One is born again. Mm -hmm. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said that you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. Mm -hmm. 
So here it is. And immediately, as we were speaking yesterday, when you're born again, you can see the kingdom and you can enter the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Here, we immediately recognize that Nicodemus looks around. He's been in church all of his life. Mm -hmm. Or as Pastor Jason says, all his little old life. <laughs> he's been in church. He knows church. He knows the scriptures. He looks at Jesus and he begins to see the fruit of the kingdom. Yes. He sees fruit. Mm -hmm. He looks at it and he says, I know mm -hmm. that you have access into the kingdom mm -hmm. because I can tell by all the signs. Mm -hmm. I can see the miracles that are performed. Mm -hmm. The words that you say. I see that you have accessed the kingdom, mm -hmm. but I haven't. Yes. I don't have the fruit. You have the fruit. I don't have the fruit. Mm -hmm. You're bearing fruit nonstop, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So Nicodemus comes being controlled by fear. 100%. Mm -hmm. Sneaks to Jesus at night mm -hmm. so that he is not seen. Mm -hmm comes in and begins to question him. Mm -hmm. And and he's asking him, you have the ability to do this. What is it? And Jesus says, you must be born again. I need you to know that you can come to church all you want. If you're not born again, you are not able to access the mm -hmm. kingdom. That's right. Actually, the Bible says that your prayers are an abomination. Mm -hmm. That's true. <gasps> what? Yeah. Yeah. No, it says that the prayers of the wicked mm -hmm. are an abomination to yeah. God. Yeah. I think it's the prophet Amos where God speaks and says, says to the people, I hate your sacrifices. I'm telling you. And I despise your feasts. Yes. I hate them. Now, these, these are people who are following the law. <laughs> that he told them, this is what you're supposed to do. Jesus says, or, or, or God says, I hate them. Come on. I hate them. Yeah. Because they are done in a wrong spirit. They're done. You must be mm -hmm. born again. Yeah. Pastor Jason, we see so many times people come in and they want a great marriage. Mm -hmm. You must be born again. Yep. Amen. We see people come in here so many mm -hmm. times and, and they don't want to be addicted. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, you must be born again. Mm -hmm. People come in here and they, they don't want to file bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. You must be born again. Must be born what's, again. what's me being born again got to do with bankruptcy? <laughs> Everything. Everything. Yeah. You must be mm -hmm. born again. Again, yeah. they don't want their children mm -hmm. to act the way their children do. They don't want their children smoking pot and turn around doing the things. Can I tell you, you must be born again. You have to do it. Yes, sir. You must be. Mm -hmm. If you're not born again, you cannot access mm -hmm. the, the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And you can't bear the fruit mm -hmm. of the kingdom yes. of God. Yes. So here it is. And you, you turn around and you say, well, I don't understand it. Well, you can't tell me where the wind starts from. Yeah. Yeah. You can't tell me where the wind starts. Right. And you can't tell me where the wind ends. Yeah. All you can tell me is that it's blowing. Mm -hmm. When you look at a Christian, a, a, a born-again person's life, mm -hmm. all you know is that they're born again. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're accessing this. Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus is talking about. He says, if you want the fruit... Mm -hmm. There's one way to it. You must be able to see the kingdom, mm -hmm. and you must be able to enter the kingdom. Yes. If you can't see the kingdom, you can't enter the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You can't access the kingdom. Yes. You can have nothing of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. yep. Matter of fact, you're exactly opposed of the kingdom. Right. The reason we have to go through this mm -hmm. is because he's not talking to somebody that hasn't went to church. Yes, that's true. He's talking to somebody... Mm -hmm. That has been to church mm -hmm. all their life. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he says in verse 10, 
Are you the teacher of Israel? Matter of fact, he calls him yeah. the teacher of Israel. Right. Are you the teacher of Israel and you don't know these things? Can it can explain this? So why here we are, mm -hmm. and we have to cover this because mm -hmm. nowadays there's so many people that think that you can turn around and begin to go to church mm -hmm. once a month, mm -hmm. and now you've accessed the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something? You must be born again. Yeah. Yeah. You must be born again. Yeah. Here, here I think is a, a very interesting thing because I'll tell you what Nicodemus was teaching at this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What Nicodemus was teaching at this time within the context of what he knew is that there was a promise mm -hmm. over the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There indeed was a promise over the people of Israel. Absolutely. There was this promise that there was going to be a righteous ruler that was going to be raised up. Mm. And when this righteous ruler was going to be raised up, that this righteous ruler was going to come back and he was going to throw off the tyranny mm. that they were under, and he was going to reestablish the kingdom of Israel. So at this stage of the game now, you have to understand that Nicodemus' people the people of Israel mm -hmm. had been at this stage of the game under 500 years mm. of some level of being overtaken. First, uh, the people of Israel, when the, the kingdom was divided with Israel and Judah, the kingdom of Israel was taken away by the Assyrians. Mm -hmm. Then the Assyrians were overtaken by the Babylonians who came and overtook Judah. So now all the people of Israel are now under captivity mm -hmm. to the nation, to the empire of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then the Babylonian empire falls in one day. Daniel prophesies the fall of it in one day. It falls in one day and two kingdoms then take over it, the kingdoms of the Medes and the Persians, or what is referred to as the Medo-Persian empire. Mm -hmm. The Medo-Persian empire then rules Israel for, for a time. And then at the end of that time, Alexander the Great and the Greeks come in. Mm -hmm. And so now they have come in. They have taken over. Alexander the Great dies. The kingdom is divided into four kingdoms. At that stage of the game, uh, Israel suffers tremendously under that. At one point, they think they're coming back because there's this group of people named the Maccabees. Mm -hmm. And this group of people named the Maccabees finally get so fed up, they're going to lead a revolt all by themselves. And the people of Israel rise up. They're about to throw off the complete tyranny of the, of the chains of this Grecian empire, when all of a sudden here comes the Roman empire. It comes balling in now. Here's the Roman empire that takes them over. And at this stage of the game, they are overrun by the Roman empire. Everything that they have is subject to it, uh, uh, to the Roman empire. It can be given to them by the Roman empire and it can be taken away. They are ready to throw this tyranny off. I'll tell you how embedded it was in their thinking and in their teaching. After Jesus' disciples had been with him three full years, mm -hmm. they are still asking him, Jesus has died. Jesus has been resurrected. Jesus is about to ascend to heaven, and he's explaining to them that I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to come fill you up. Mm -hmm. Do you know what their question is? Lord, is it at this time that you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Come on. They are still thinking. Yeah, that is, it's going to be that way. In the fleshly terms. Come on. Come on. They're still thinking in the worldly terms, but they get baptized in the spirit. Mm -hmm. A wind blows into an upstairs room with 120 of them. Come on. And when that wind blows in, guess what? You never hear them say again. When are we going to throw off this Roman empire? They uh, never say it again. Look through the New yeah, Testament. Yeah. You can't find them saying it again. Come on. You can't see a single apostle mm -hmm. saying, oh, we have to throw off the chains of this horrible empire. Mm -hmm. Not one. When that wind blows in, yeah. when the spirit comes in, yeah. they begin to see Come on. the kingdom. They see it. Come on. My God. Come on. And they enter. Yes. They access. Yeah. And, and so what they're looking at is, Man, this empire can't do anything to me. As a matter of fact, here's what the empire did for him. I know we're getting a little way off, and we're, and we're right. almost out of time. 
But here's what that empire, look what you do to me. <laughs> here's what happens with that empire. So, so Acts 1, 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. comes upon you. And you'll be witnesses to me in both Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Here they are hung up because there is a revival going on in Jerusalem mm -hmm. and nobody wants to move from Jerusalem. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden people start getting killed. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, there is a very public trial and a public killing of the Jews yes. to a man named Stephen, mm -hmm. who they have put in a position of leadership, who saw great revival. The Bible says that after the death of Stephen, Acts chapter 8, verse 1, after the, de the death of Stephen, the, the people began to disperse Absolutely. throughout the region yeah. of Samaria. What happens is, is they look and they say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can even see that persecution pushes me to my purpose. Come on, come on, come on. I'm telling That's how we can look at the kingdom. When I can look at the kingdom and I can see, I can see the benefit of pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I can look at that, I can see the benefit of pain. I can say, there we go. There it is. There it is. You can see into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You can enter mm -hmm. into the kingdom. Yes. You can access the mm -hmm. things of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And you are part mm -hmm. of the kingdom. Yeah. But you must be, be born, born again. again. Yes, sir. So many times, Pastor, and I, I know you have seen it. I have seen it. People come to me and they tell me, how they still are what they've always been. Mm, it's true. I'm talking about church people. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about good people. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people that if you ask them, they would tell you they're saved. Mm -hmm. It's not my question. Mm. My question is, are you born again? Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you were born again, the old man died. Mm -hmm. You was born. Yeah again mm -hmm. and now you take after your new daddy yeah i i've even seen this pastor andy <clears throat> where you'd have a person who would have uh, that they'll say that there are six things let's say that there are six things in their life i can watch them advance mm -hmm. in five things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and one area of their life remain back here oh, yes, and is the area that is not reborn that's it. It's that's, the area that's, that's it. not touched by the spirit. That's it. That's so, it. so what they can have is in their in their finances, in their ministry, in their prophetic work, in their in mm -hmm. their prayer life, yes, in their yes, reading. Yes. They're fantastic, but in their marriage, come on, come on, they're come stuck on. back here. That's it because they've not been reborn, or or in their business, or in their giving, or what, whatever what it is. is. What Everything is. else is pushed forward, but this one thing is stuck back here because it's the area that has not been accessed by the spirit. It has not been reborn. And so what we have to what we have to be asking for is a rebirth. Come on. Have to. And 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 that is uh, I think even in the context of what we're talking about this week, particularly spending seven, eight minutes at the beginning of this particular mm -hmm. recording to talk to people about evangelizing people, inviting people. It is a woeful few people. Yes. That will invite somebody to church. And you know why? You know why? Yeah, of course. Because they don't realize when that person's born again, mm -hmm. they're different. Yeah, that's right. I don't care mm -hmm. when you invited them before they were born again, mm -hmm. they were just like you were. They were a sinner, yeah. wicked, unrighteous, mm -hmm. uh, unsubmitted to God. Yep. Wicked in their thinking, wicked in their intentions, mm -hmm. selfish in their ways. It, it just is what it, they're not born again. Yeah. But when they are born again, they're going to be just like you, if not better. Yeah, that's right. They're going to be just like him. Mm -hmm. They're going to be reborn mm -hmm. and they'll be brand new, mm -hmm. completely different. Yes. Completely different. Yes. If we could understand this, Pastor Jason. Some of us would be more willing for others to come to church mm -hmm. than what we are now. I agree. Because truthfully, mm -hmm. 
we don't want to be mm -hmm. close to that unrighteous person. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about a young man that came to me uh, a week or so ago. And uh, a very young man, one of our students, as a matter of fact, said, I want to invite my mom to church, but my mom has a tendency to act out. Mm -hmm. And I said, invite her anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you that she won't influence the room as much as that room is going to influence her. That's it. That's it. And, and she'll be touched by God. Mm -hmm. Born again. Mm -hmm. And he won't recognize her. Won't recognize her. Yeah. He will not recognize her. So, Pastor Andy, we have to pray. Obviously, we are way out of time. Way out of time. <laughs> and, uh, but we have to pray today. And what we have to pray, I, this is what I would love for us to pray, is that we, the Bible says that we can pray to have eyes to see, mm -hmm. ears to hear, and a mm -hmm. heart that can perceive and understand. Mm -hmm. I want you to pray today that the eyes of our enlightenment would be open yeah. and that we would see through the, the lenses of the kingdom Come on. Come on. and not through the lenses of our flesh. Can you pray that for yes, us? Absolutely. Thank Father you. God, we come to Lord, you right Rabbi now Rabbi in Rabbi the mighty Rabbi name Rabbi. of Jesus. And once Shum again, oh God, I'm asking that you remove the blinders, yes. Lord God, from our eyes, in the Lord name Master. Of Jesus. I'm asking that the worldly Lord ways Rabbi of seeing and viewing Rabbi things, Lord God, be removed Rabbi from Rabbi us. Rabbi I'm asking, oh God, that we yes, begin Lord. to see with clear, yes, clear Lord. eyes of the Spirit, Lord God. Yes, the Lord. lenses of our understanding, oh God, be enlightened with the kingdom of God. I'm praying right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you give us a heart yes. like yours, Lord yes. Master. Yes. Lord, the calloused heart that has is calloused up yes, to such Lord. a place, Lord Master, yes, Lord. that Father God, we're we're not even excited about mm, people be, mm. being born again, and, yes, and Lord, God. we don't even get excited about Lord God new creations yes, and, and the work of the kingdom. I'm asking, oh mm. God, that you remove that selfish heart from yes, us, God. and that you replace, Lord Master, a heart like yours inside of us. And I'm asking, oh God, mm. that you show us mm. your ways, teach us your ways, mm. let your spirit mm. absolutely yes, rule Lord. our yes, Lord. spirit, oh God, yes, Lord. in every way, rule our thinking, transform our minds yes, with God. your word, I yes, ask God. you, in the mighty name, in of, the Jesus. name of Jesus. And as you do, do it, these God. things, I know that we will glorify yes, your name yes, in all Lord. that we do. I thank you for thank it. you for in it, Jesus name. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So, hey, listen, we will see you tonight here at prayer. All important. Mm -hmm. All important. Get here. Even if you have to be late, get here and we'll see you right back here tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Hey, everybody. Pastor Jason here. We want to thank you for joining us for today's devotion. Remember to share it across your social media platforms. If you live in the South Atlanta area or the North Macon and Forsyth areas and you are looking for a great church where the power and the presence of God are on display, we would love to have you visit us at our Revival Center campus in Locust Grove, Georgia, or our Forsyth campus in Forsyth, Georgia. You can find information about these locations at our website, AbundantLifeChurch.com. Remember, it's time to stretch yourself. It's time to dream bigger. It's time to believe for the impossible. It's time to expand.